for sure. But let me ask you a personal question. Is there one element of the future that even though logically you can argue, yes, that's a positive thing, subconsciously or inherently or deep in your gut, you are actually afraid of? Like that's something about the future that scares you. Kevin mm-hmm. Kelly. Yeah. So, so one of the concerns I have, a, a troubling concern, because um, I'm not worried. There's two troubling concerns I have. Um, one of them is as we make um, AIs more capable, uh, particularly if we embody them with some kind of, of bodies and we make them ubiquitous, um, at some point it seems to me that we might come to treat them like slaves. Whether they're slaves or not, I think treating them like they were slaves might be corrosive to us in our spirit. So I'm, I'm, I have a concern about that, about whether or not, and, and, and that concern was sort of made visible uh, by some videos of a, of a robot mule called Boston Dynamics, um, where they make this four-footed robot. It kind of it looks like a, a pony or something without a head. It's, it's, it's a robot that was walking. And they, to show how stable it is, people kick it to try to kick it down. And you watch it and you cringe uh, because it feels as if someone's kicking an animal, even though it's obviously not an animal. If it had four wheels, we wouldn't cringe. But the fact that it has four legs makes us uncomfortable. And um, I, I think we're going to have far more emotional attachment, maybe as it was illustrated by the movie Her. I think we have far more emotional attachment to s- some of these things that we're making because, in fact, we are going to engineer emotion into them because emotion is very, very useful to have. And so I'm, I'm, I'm concerned about the, how treating these things as servants or slaves might affect us. Whether right. even if even if they're, they're mechanical, the, the, that might have some uh, long term effect on us. So that affect our emotions, humans emotions. Exactly. So, right. So it's right. not so much what happens to the artificial intelligence right. because right. it's artificial intelligence. Right. 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 Real. It doesn't think. It doesn't feel right. in the way that we we. But you, how it, how it affects us subconsciously right. because we're treating it as if it was a slave or servant. So was that the first one or was that both of them? That was one. This is the second one is related to that. And that is I do have a worry about when we weaponize AI uh, and, and cyber warfare and cyber conflict. And, and, and my concern there is that we are rapidly going into an area where we don't have any rules about what's acceptable and what's not. So we have the Geneva Convention and stuff we have evolved over hundreds of years, which kind of restricts um, – how cool we can be in a certain sense, how crazy we can be. It says you can be this crazy, but not this crazy. Uh, you, you can be this horrible, but not that horrible in war. And um, right now we're, we're doing things to each other at the state level, the U S China, Russia, Israel, uh, Iran, and others. We're doing things that we don't, that nobody, that no station a nation is admitting that they're doing, even though we're doing it. And we don't have any uh, lines and any control over about what we were acceptable. So is it okay to disrupt someone else's banking system? Is it okay to turn the electricity off? Is it okay to let a plane crash or whatever? We, we don't have any uh, acceptable norms for what we are going to tolerate in uh, cyber conflict. And that, I, and my worry is it'll take a disaster of some sort before we come to some agreement. Sam Walton's rules for building a business. This guy made billions and billions of dollars. In fact, he could have been possibly the wealthiest man on earth 